Here we are. Good morning world, another day. Another day. Get my coffee all set up, move back to my other side of my driftwood table. It's cool that painting up there with a moose on the other wall. God, just takes me right back to heaven every time I glance at it. They caught the colors perfectly, those bull moose up in the willow in the mountains. God, it makes me sick that I don't guide up north full time anymore. It's a tough pill to swallow, especially when you get towards uh, July when everybody's heading up north and they're shoeing horses and getting ready to go and you can smell all the tack and the horses and hear the noises. And, and one thing that's the big signal for me was hearing the breeze going through the poplar trees and those green leaves, that sound. And a lot of you probably know that sound. It's not a sound, it's, it's not a sound that is common where I live this south of the province. It's up, it's a northern sound to me. Oh, I miss it. I miss it, but I still go up north. I still go, but it's not the same. I mean, it's pretty good, but it's definitely not the same as that ultimate sense of freedom. I guess that's probably what screwed me up <laughs> for society, for the controllers of society. When you get to live absolutely free and healthier than healthy can be, absolutely disconnected from the mainstream world and uh, all you're relying on is your natural senses and um, absolute healthy nourishment and you're moving your body the way it's built to move and uh, it's just something else just something else to live like that and taste it probably don't make any sense a little bit of a battle as usual right let's get a little more of this go juice in me Adventure Dog just had her breakfast. Now, where are we? We're getting our voices heard as we trudge along, move along. Gaining our knowledge, right? Sharing our knowledge. I guess the channel's been, what do they call it? Shadow banned? Whatever. Um, getting a lot of messages from people saying they are still subscribed to the channel, but this channel is not... The channel is not letting people know that there's a new video up. <laughs> poor little things. Hey, those poor little things at Google. Poor little things. Now. <clears throat> excuse me. So Adventure Dog has just retrieved a elk bone that I gave the other day. And she'll be chewing on that below the table. If you hear anything weird. It's not me farting, alright? <laughs> Now listen to this, here's an email that came in a couple days ago, it's titled Andrew Dawson. Hey Steve, use my name, Robbie Martin from Half Moon Bay. Half Moon Bay, I think there's only one Half Moon Bay, isn't there? There's only one that I'm familiar with, which is Seashelt on the coast of BC across from Vancouver Round where there is a pile of sightings. Is there another Half Moon Bay in the US or something, or Eastern Canada, I don't know. Anyway, use my name, Robbie Martin from Half Moon Bay. You mentioned interest in the case of Andrew Dawson. I guess like that's that Albertan who filmed something on a mountain and then died. He's passed on. And here's what I found out. When looking into his case, he had filmed a giant on top of a snow bluff and then subsequently filmed two helicopters taking something off the mountain. Then what looked like a UFO or a portal, then a structure that he deemed that wasn't there before. He also had filmed himself looking like he was under duress, looking off to the side. Then had tried to go up the mountain at night where he had filmed the giant and was stopped by somebody in a black vehicle. The video of the portal, when I looked at it, I saw contrails with a backlit sun reflection from a regular airplane. The structure was actually the tower from a nearby ski lift gondola. The one video he used is a thumbnail of him looking off to the side, which I thought was weird that he picked that particular one. If you look closely to the man that stopped him, he was wearing a hoodie and Timberland boots, which government official wouldn't be wearing. Plus, when he sped away from the house, it sounded like it had an aftermarket exhaust. Conveniently catching an 
catching him spinning the tires, which is unprofessional, and I just don't think it felt right. Now, I don't know if you've looked into the remote viewing very much, but from what I found out, it's the be-all and end-all of truth-seeking ability, but depending on who's doing it, it's how much you can trust that information. A man by the name of John Vivanco had remote viewed had remote viewed the Andrew Dawson case and what he found was lines what he found was lines up with what I had researched and that was the initial video was real he filmed a Bigfoot on top of the cliff and it was a big one the remote viewing data showed no other video was real what it did show was that he was suicidal The background sound of the dog chewing the bone might have to go. <laughs> the remote viewing data showed no other video was real. What it did show is that he was suicidal. So what I think... Oh, hold on a minute. <clears throat> the remote viewing data showed no other video was real. What it did show is that he was suicidal. So what I think happened there is he caught the Bigfoot and content created the rest to give his family something to have before he took his own life. The remote viewing data lined up with that John Vivanco had apparently contacted his girlfriend, which had confirmed these things. She said that yes, he was suicidal, <clears throat> excuse me, and took his own life, and most of the videos were fake. Kudos for him for jumping on that opportunity to leave something before he did what he did, but I thought I'd pass on what I had learned. Rest in peace, Andrew Dawson. Um, P.S. I don't know if you know this one, but... <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Okay, man. Appreciate that. I'm not up to date, intimate details with what happened that case. That's interesting to me. I'm not fully familiar with the remote viewing thing. It sounds very interesting. It's confusing to me just because I just don't know the exact details of that skill yet myself. Interesting. I can't really comment too much on it because I just don't know myself, right? I haven't looked into it, so I can't really say much. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I haven't a clue why people would go after one person with one video of a Sasquatch being one there's literally hundreds now? I haven't a clue. Don't know, a bunch of stuff doesn't make sense, right? All right, this next email is titled, You Asked Gut-Wrenching Laughter. <laughs> Here we go. It's been a long time since I had a good laugh that makes your face hurt and tears up your eyes. Here's a story about a non-sighting encounter with one of the forest people that I'm fully convinced that even he got a serious good laugh. Again, that's the dog chewing her bone under the table, but what do you do, right? I got to know a fellow from work who was Mexican by heritage, but Texan city boy by bring up. All right, I changed my mind on the bone. Funny how, uh, it's funny how the animal can make you feel guilty. <laughs> she turns around and looks at me like, huh? How come I can't come? I'm supposed to be with you under the table. Anyway, sorry. On this afternoon, I decided to take him up on the mountain to fish a nice little crater-like crater pond for some togue fishing, bracket lake trout. We took the afternoon until dark fishing. Had very good luck catching a couple small lakers but several a piece, several a piece, 24 to 30 inch lake trout. We were all done fishing and was at the shoreline with the 10 foot aluminum boat and unloading it. The walk and carry from the truck to the water was about 50 yards. And as we were unloading all the fish poles and contents of the boat, I heard a good sized stick break not 25 feet behind me. I already knew what was there due to several encounters and including multiple sightings of the beings there around the pond by around this pond by me. I just kept going about my business and so did my friend. My friend never even heard the stick break and no threat was present or felt, so no sense saying anything until he notices. After everything is unloaded from the boat and up to the truck, which to, which took two trips for each of us, 
Now we were walking down to grab the boat, and I heard a very heavy footstep, and the other guy heard nothing. But I could tell he was getting a little spooked. We carried the boat back to the truck and loaded it up, then loaded all the stuff back into the boat that was in the truck now. As I was ratchet strapping the boat in, the fellow with me is standing next to me on the driver's side of the truck, and as he starts to walk to the front of the truck, he hears something big in the woods about 25 feet in front of him, lined up with the passenger door. When he heard the movement, it froze him in his tracks. At this time, he only, he only made it to the headlight on the driver's side of the truck. He turns and said, what was that? I said, a Sasquatch, or you may know it as a Bigfoot. He immediately turns around and says, nope, I'm not getting in the truck on that side. I instantly laughed then said, don't worry, it's just a Sasquatch looking for a Mexican girlfriend. <laughs> I was laughing pretty hard after I said that. He was not impressed at all and scared already. Sadly, it was too easy to give him shit at this point, but I gave it right to him, almost relentlessly, but I couldn't help myself. He was scared and ended up, ended up crawling into the passenger side of the truck through the driver's side. We were loaded up in the cab of the truck and my buddy asked me, was that really a Bigfoot? And I said, yes, it was. The next part is a bit brutal, just a warning. Whatever, bring it on. I told my buddy, it's a good thing you got on the driver's side while the Sasquatch is waiting on the passenger side, because if you didn't, then you might have been grabbed or pinned up next to the truck or even picked up and bent over the side of the bed of the truck. Giant Squatch dong drove up your ass and come out your mouth. <laughs> I just immediately got overwhelmed with extreme laughter and watery eyes. So bad it hurt my cheeks and guts. My buddy's reaction was instantly upset, as in pissed. Then to guarding himself, he said, F you, man. Was there really a Bigfoot there? I said, yes, it was a Sasquatch, and he was going to make you his bitch. <laughs> All right, so you're obviously laughing your face off, laying it on him. I get it. But then I lost it laughing again. I know, I know what a dick, I know what a dick move. But I literally couldn't help myself. Sounds like my friends. Same shit <laughs> for a lot of us out there. After about two miles driving out off the mountain, I came around and told him, yes, Bigfoot is real, and I've seen many of them over the years, including a few around that pond. They don't bother you. They just watch and observe you. I also told him, if they're going to do anything, then I'd, I'd be gone years ago. I know damn well that we encountered a Sasquatch, and I gave the Sasquatch a wicked ego boost with the squat dong comment. Excuse me. Plus, what I was getting from the Sasquatch was his laughter, and he was losing it laughing. I'd never laughed so hard and painful in my lifetime as I did that time. I'd sent you, Steve, a pile of shit over the past few years, but some of us know a lot. Sorry? Some of us know a lot and really don't give a shit about much more than they aren't dangerous to at least us. Respect to give space. All good. At least my knowledge and experience has shown me that. Take care and read or don't read it. And, and read or don't read this. Either way, I enjoy listening to where others are at on their journey. Sincerely, not giving up my name publicly on your channel. Not endangering what isn't dangerous. All right, man. Thanks for that. Handful of us laughed, and a handful of us might even be offended. <laughs> I hope not. We'll see. I think I've gotten rid of most of the the offended culture supporters. I think, Ex except for the other desperate ones that struggle to keep their lips sealed and <laughs> listen to us daily. All right, here is another email titled "Crazy Stuff." Hello, Stephen. Good day. I absolutely love what you are doing with all this, and all the haters can go suck one. <laughs> I've been in the woods most of my life, and I love it. I've had a couple wired, weird things spelt wired. There's going to be a couple typos. No big deal. We'll get through them. I've had a couple weird things happen to me, like a big rock. It hit the water in front of my boat when my nephew and I were trolling with an electric motor up the back of a lake. As soon as I hit the wood line with my spotlight, I see an eye shine, and it instantly turned around. 
spot a lot in my life and I've never had anything turn around instantly and never see it again. But the craziest thing that has ever happened was around 90, 1995 or 1996. I was around 10 and my brother was around 16. It was in the summer and we would always watch Beavis and Butthead and go out on the first story roof and do stupid kid stuff, lol. Our bedroom windows were level with the front porch roof so it was easy to get out. We only stayed on the first story roof so we didn't make too much noise to wake up our dad. <laughs> the last night we ever went out, I decided to take my Nickelodeon flash screen light, which was a handheld strobe light. It was flashing. I was flashing it at bats flying around, which got old fast, so we sat on the roof and looked at the stars. I lived in the middle of a big field with the only trees close were in my yard. That will come into play soon. For some reason, I started flashing it at the sky. Now, I don't know if it was anything to do with this, but after doing this a couple of times, something bipedal ran across the second story roof and jumped in the tree that was around 30 feet from the corner of my house. I'm literally getting goosebumps all over just telling this part. My brother and I both just looked at each other, and that was that. The worst part about it was we had to run right at it to get back into the window. That was the last time we ever went out on the roof. The next morning I went up the tree and there's broken limbs at the trunk of the tree. I've told a few people this over the years and I've never gotten a good answer what it could have been. Hopefully someone can help out. Thank you for your time. Keep up the good work. That's pretty creepy. Pretty creepy. And you know, the one thing that, uh, hold on a minute, the one thing that tells me uh, that definitely happened <laughs> for me is when people, the, the the tiny details of some people's experiences, right? It's like the fisheries officers that I was having beers with, with a buddy of mine who's a fish cop. And when he explained about seeing with a carload of guys taking humpback road back to Souk after drinking and the city. We all used to do that. And back in the day, and uh, when they saw the thing come down from the, would have been the um, east side of Humpback Road, southeast side, heading west, across the road in front of them, and that road's real narrow, and it's real creepy road. It's like the whole forest is overgrown over top of it, like an Amazon canopy, and it winds and winds around swamps and shit. <clears throat> but what he said was one of the things he really stressed on in his story was when we were scared to turn around, right? Who thinks of that detail when they're making up some kind of bullshit story? Not too many. When you picture being there in a small car and then it, it ran the headlights in front of you and then you got to stop and you got to turn around like this <laughs> about six or seven times to try to turn around, right? Now picture that, and then you got this huge hairy thing behind you, behind your car or beside it out of the lights. Just like this person just described, we had to go towards it to get back in the window. Right? We had to go towards it to get in the window. They were scared. That was a scary moment. That fact they had to go towards whatever that was. What's it doing on the roof? I don't know. People might say, it could have been a Sasquatch, there was no forest, it was all fields around the house. Guess what? We've got multiple incidents coming in from these beings being on nuclear sites in the prairies with no cover for miles. What's up with that, right? All right what do we got? Holy, this is a book, I think. Should I go in? What do we got? I'll go in. Um... Uh, is this copied from somebody's book? Excuse me, this is a whole bunch of things copied from a book. It's probably best to just suggest the books instead of copying them and blazing them down here. Holy cow, this is, take, this is literally somebody copied a book or a bunch of books. Oh man, I don't think everybody would yeah, I don't know. Sorry. Let me read this on my own first and I'll... Oh, gosh. All right, 
This next one is titled Mind Speak Slash Eyes Slash ET. Hi, Steve. My name is Sylvia. I'm from somewhere in Arizona. In one of your recent videos, you mentioned that you feel there is more to our eyes than we may all know. And I agree with you. I am an empath since a child. An empath is someone who can feel other people's emotional and sometimes physical pain. It wasn't until I was 50 years old that I learned that our eyes speak volumes. You know that saying that says, quote, our eyes are a window to our soul, end quote. Well, it's very true. It happened to me in 2011 one day while walking at a park in San Diego, where I'm originally from, and I made the mistake of looking into a homeless man's eyes as he passed me. I immediately began sobbing uncontrollably as I felt all his sorrow and emotional pain. Since that day, I'm very careful of whose eyes I look into. That same year, I began to have experiences of sometimes feeling as if someone else was looking through my eyes. The only way to explain it is it felt as though whatever, whoever was looking through my eyes were excited at what they were seeing. The reason I say that is one day I looked down at my hand and I felt it and I, and I felt an amazement and it felt like my vision changed and I was now examining my hand. It wasn't, it hasn't happened for about five years now. And now knowing what I know, I would not allow it, which leads me to say this. I do believe in mind control and now mind speak after watching your channel, which is why I believe we all need to start protecting our subconscious mind. They're an affirmation that I began saying daily years ago that says, quote, subconscious mind only listen to my higher self Subconscious mind, only my higher self is in charge. But, recently I changed it to, subconscious mind, only God is in charge. Some subconscious mind, only listen to God. I was born in a religion. I didn't come out of a very conservative religion until I was 40 years old. At that time, I began to explore a spiritual freedom that allowed me to learn the power of who we really are. And in 2007, I began to meditate after I moved to an area in San Diego with beautiful mountains in the near distance. I know, I know, I now wonder if the mountains hold a different energy. I was the happiest I ever was, since I now had the freedom to explore other beliefs other than religion. Shortly after I began to meditate, three things happened. In one year, sorry, three things happened in one year. One, while I meditated one evening, and many nights after, I began to see what looked like an alien. Mind you, I didn't believe in them since I was never taught about their existence. But here it was, clear as day. It looked exactly like the E.T. in the movie. And I kid you not when I say, I could see its mouth moving. As if it was speaking to me. So many evenings during meditating, I tried to figure out what it could possibly be saying. I know it sounds crazy, lol, but it is true. Second strange thing that happened was one night while asleep, I was awakened by the loudest, most terrifying screeching meow slash scream that gave me instant goosebumps and I froze out of fear. The strange thing was my cat, who was sleeping right next to me, never moved. I don't know, maybe she was scared stiff too. The third strange thing that happened around that same time was one night I was awakened by what sounded like something being inserted and downloaded into my right ear. You know the sound that an 8-track tape makes from the 70s while being inserted in the deck? Well, that's how it sounded. It was so effing strange. I feel so blessed to have my 45-year-old son, who not only introduced me to your channel, but we share the same beliefs of what is happening in our world right now. In a nutshell, we need to pray for the whole world. We are in big trouble. We can only pray that these beings we can only pray that these beings that we are finally learning to accept can help us. God bless you, brother, and all my brothers and sisters, peace be with you. Oh, and then like a second one email attached. Steve, I wanted to also mention that I believe without a doubt that our intuition is our direct guidance and protection from our Creator. Since we have free will. It is most helpful when we ask to be guided and directed by him, her, or it. 
I learned many years ago we have six senses, not five. You already know this. We are told slash taught only about five. Without getting into many details, three years ago I had a negative spirit slash ghost in my house that was attempting to put bad thoughts in my mind. Let me tell you, mind control is real. All I have to say is, thank God I believe in God and his powerful angels. Light will always win in every dark situation. We all need to remember that. Can't argue that one. You cannot argue that one. <laughs> every dark situation, light will smash the shit out of the darkness. Without a doubt. Empaths. Interesting, right? Empaths, mediums, remote viewers, Intuitives. Hmm. I'm gonna try to shut my mouth. I, I find I'm tending. I'm find. I'm finding that I'm tending to be a little rambly lately. Take from what you will, or leave it, you guys. There's a lot of people emailing in that are impasse, and I believe them. Now. Uh, what do we got? Uh, this is from, oh, here we go. All right, this is from a person who wrote into Darren, our friend who went to the woods and recorded the knocking the other day. Wrote into him through his YouTube channel, Outlaw Country, I believe. Okay, so this is okay, so this is an email to Darren from a lady watching his channel and he forwarded it to us. Hi. Hope your day's going well. I've been making my way through your YouTube videos. Now that it's hot and humid here and I'm enjoying them so far. I wanted to relate my experience with you. It's not one of those super crazy things, just odd things adding up slowly. This started about twenty five years ago. I've lived in the same area now for a long time. I enjoy your trail walking daily, and sometimes I walk our neighborhood as well. Well, one day I was walking our neighborhood street, and I saw a really tiny turtle laying on the pavement. It wasn't much bigger than a U.S. quarter. Well, I picked it up as it wasn't moving, and it turns out it was a tiny snapping turtle, and it was badly dehydrated but still alive. I believe all life is important, so I took him home, put him in a saucer of water, and left him there. I went back and checked on him half an hour later, and he, re and he rehydrated and super active. Surprised me. So my husband and I took him out to the next road, <clears throat> excuse me, over from our subdivision. There is a decommissioned water plant at the river that runs past us. It was quite a steep bank. My husband walked one way, and I walked another looking for a flat spot to let him go in the water. I bent down, let him go, and all hell broke loose. A doe exploded out of the underbrush about six feet to my left. And at the same time, a huge rock went flying over my head and splashed in the river. It scared the hell out of me. I saw nothing but the deer and the boulder flying over my head and the large splash in the river. <laughs> I trail walk on National Park property frequently. The noises started then, branches, branches breaking big limbs falling out of trees, rocks being hit together, and what I now know are tree knocks. All these things continued. Then I would start getting really creeped out on the trail like something was watching me. I started getting disoriented on the path out. And I've walked that trail tons of times. It was so weird. One particularly creepy day, I was walking the trail out, something drug what I felt like a hand or fingers across the back of my neck, moving my hair. I jumped, turned around, and there was nothing there. Then I started finding deer legs only. It was really weird. That's a common one, isn't it? Finding a deer leg, legs here and there, fresh. I began finding feathers, mostly blue jay. That rings a bell, doesn't it? And one time there was a bunch of grass slash flowers in that same spot on the trail on my way out. The trail comes back to itself, so it wasn't there when I went down, but there when I came out. 
I walked very early at daybreak and I was the only one there. So I switched my walking spot as things were getting too weird. Across the railroad tracks from that spot, there's an open field that belongs to a preservation group. It's 300 acres with a path cut through it, so I started doing my walks there. I liked that I could see all around me, too. The weirdness followed me. I could feel something watching me from the woods line, and I'd look in that direction, and I could hear something heavy, shifting its weight, cracking sticks. I could hear it really well. This happened when there was a tall stand of corn, as well the same thing, accompanied by a strong feces smell. I just know it was there, the shifting of weight again. COVID happened and my favorite spots were getting crowded, so I looked for another spot to walk and relax when there it was, super creepy there. I was on the edge, walking that trail the whole time, had my eyes watching everything. I'd made that loop and was coming back got to the bottom of the hill and felt something watching me. It was intense. I stood there just looking around, certain I would see something and thinking to myself, I'm not coming back here. Just when I thought that, this voice came in my head and said, don't come back. Wow. Accompanied by this soul-shaking fear like I can't describe. I was terrified. I got back to my car as quickly as I could. I had about a mile to go and I was looking behind me the whole time. That was five years ago now and I can't bring myself to go back there. As much as I like to go face my fears, I just can't do it. Understandably. Fast forward about three years, I go back to that original trail. I had heard all that activity. It was a beautiful fall day. Um, no punctuation, <laughs> if you haven't figured that out yet, no big deal. And I started down the trail and to my right, I heard a loud crash, like something big fell out of the tree. I looked and saw nothing. Then I heard running, loud thuds, and I could see the leaves being kicked up as the footfalls landed as it ran, so freaky. That's pretty crazy, isn't it? That was, that was it. I was scared, went back out of the woods. I went home and thought about it, and I went back to the trail a few days later. As I got back to the spot where that happened, it was very quiet. So I said, leave me alone. You scared me last time. Then to my left, about five feet away, I heard a grunt in acknowledgement. So now things are happening at my home. I love to open all the windows in the mornings while it's still dark to air out the house. Oh, the punctuation screws me up sometimes, right? So now, things are happening at my home. I love to open all the windows in the mornings while it's still dark to air out the house. A smell of feces comes in the windows. One of my hanging plant baskets is a large fern. All the hangers were unclipped except one. This is in my backyard, fenced in. No person was back there. The planter wasn't broken, just unsnapped. Hmm? Let me read that one more time. That didn't make sense to me. One of my hanging plant baskets is a large fern. All the hangers were unclipped except one. This is in my backyard, fenced in. No person's there. Okay, unclipped. Hmm. I'm guessing they're unclipped from being hung, but then where were they? Just last week, something watching from the woods again, sticks breaking under shifting weight. I live in a very populated area. I had no idea something like this could be here, but now I know. The one occasion was in the field, walking. I heard a weird noise. It was early spring, thought it might be a turkey at first, but then it got a lot louder, and it was running back and forth quickly in the woods, cover and it sounded just like a hyena. I live in Virginia. There's no hyenas here. My dogs were even getting scared, so we turned and got out of there very quickly, again looking over my shoulder all the way back. We do have coyotes in our area. I've had problems with them before, but it wasn't them either. I do feel somehow tagged, and I do think 
they've messed with me and I don't like it, but I'm not giving up on my outdoor time. I'm just not. The final insult for me was I had a really bad dream. I was yelling in my sleep. My husband heard me saying, quote, don't touch me, end quote. There was a tall, hairy, white being standing next to my bed in my dream. The weirdest thing was the next day my arthritic, my arthritic knees that caused me terrible pain when I walk were no longer hurting. So go figure that. I'm sorry this is long, I did relate just a small part of this on Steve's channel, but now I'm sure it's all connected. I spent a lot of time in the woods my whole life. I used to ride my horses daily on trails. I loved to walk and I was on a volunteer search and rescue team. We were in the woods a lot all night, look, all night long looking for lost people. So, I'm not, a, I'm not a woods novice. And I've never been scared out there until those events I described took place. I'm not scared to go out now. I do walk alone. I haven't been hurt so far, so try not to worry about it. I'm very, very aware. Hope this makes sense. I'm not a writer. Take care. Linda Conrad. Totally made sense to me, Linda. You did great. Couple typos. No big deal. And I hope they leave you alone. Tell them to. Tell them they're not allowed. You know, our, our First Nation superhero ladies, they told me flat out that we command them in a way we tell them and give them or take away permission they said just tell them all out you can't do this you can't come here you can't stop it and they said that with a lot of confidence so give it a go and then uh with scott carpenter helped a lot of people I've mentioned numerous times and helped them out more on a spiritual route then the healing thing the healing humans. It's been noted a few times. Do I know what's going on there? Obviously not. Do I believe they're here to protect us or help us out or save us from our future? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think they are going to sh save us in any way, shape, or form on a large scale when it comes to the shit show that's going down. I don't think so. I think possibly, possibly if they can successfully avoid avoid the outcome of us themselves they're not gonna have shit to do with us they're gonna sit back live life the way they're living it and watch us come and go which i have a funny feeling they may have watched us come and go previously it's all seems to be pointing that way in true histories right it's confusing it's frustrating confusing and frustrating but anyway i mean when i if or when I do go to attempt to communicate myself, am I going to be asking for help to save the planet? No. <laughs> no. I just want to know what's up. What's the truth? What is the truth on who you are? What is the truth on who I am? What's the truth on what I, we can possibly be doing ourselves with skills? I want to know what it is exactly that we have had intentionally raised from us because it has been without a doubt. Anyways, I'm repeating myself. This should be good for right now, I think. I got a bunch of stuff to get going on here. Oh, we've got, we've got, I've got a man coming on here tomorrow with me who emailed quite a while ago. And I believe he is the man who, when he was a boy, he was picked up by the shoulders and looked straight into the face of one of these beings. And that need jerked him to go on a lifelong quest for knowledge. And I believe he just got back from South America or something, hanging out with some shamans and stuff. And he's got a lot to share. He's coming on here tomorrow with me. That's going to be, I'm anticipating that to be quite the interesting conversation, right? Excuse me. I love to hear from people who have seen firsthand and didn't become obsessed with the one topic and it knee jerked them into finding true answers for a lot. I love hearing from those people and I hear from a lot of them. So there, that's about it. No more emails in case my voice really annoys the shit out of you. But anyway, I'm going to get ripping. I'm going to get ripping. I got to say this one thing, though. One thing. I don't know why I saw there's a, there's a second in command. I got to say this to you guys because it is so outrageous. And it's, it's just so outrageous. I got to repeat it. Um, the, the level that the so-called people in charge 
are looking at us in how how can I even say this? Listen to this one. We've got the second in command Nazi in in uh, Canada stand, and they've imposed yet another tax on the people to take more of the people's money, and they actually are saying on camera to us the people. You don't understand. This tax is going to put more money in the hands of families across Canada. <laughs> how how amazing, how amazing is that statement? I mean, okay, if you're talking to a stick or a pickle, you might be able to pull it pull it off. But it's just amazing to me the level it has gotten to of the insanity when the people who are stealing the money from the people tell them that stealing their money is actually going to put more money in their hands when 100% of the money the new tax are talking about comes from the people. So taxing the people more is going to put more money in families' hands across Canada. That is a quote from who is currently in control of our country. If that isn't absolutely alarming to the planet, I don't know what more you need. Holy she it. It's amazing. What an amazing thing life is to watch all this insanity go down. It drives me absolutely semi-bonkers, right? People might get angry that I'm talking about it. Well, if you are, then you just may, may, may be more dim than that woman who spoke those words. Think about it. Amazing. Amazing, amazing. What do we do? How do we do? How do we deal? How do we live? How do we get a hold of life and make it the party is supposed to be when this is going down? Oh, man. Oh, man. Anyway, uh, I believe the channel's been shadow banned. I mentioned that earlier. <laughs> oh, well. Um, YouTube does not want all of you to know that I'm uploading videos. So, I understand, I guess, and get an idea that most of the majority of the people that come here right now are having to search for it themselves to see if there might be something new. Unfortunate, but it is, it is what it is. A lot of people email me and tell me to stay on track and don't talk about certain topics. How can I do that? Think about it. <laughs> Think about that one. What else? I think that's about it. Oh, Sarah said that her decals, <laughs> decals, decals, stickers, these suckers, she said, <clears throat> are, uh, she said they're all over the world. I'm like, what? Are you serious? She said, yeah. She says, no, I've mailed them all over the world. She said, tons have gone to the United Kingdom. How crazy is that? Ship piles of them have been to, she said, tons of them have gone to Australia, New Zealand, South America. Isn't that crazy? How many people are here where everybody is from listening to everybody speak truth? The whole freaking world is here. Isn't that amazing? That's something else. The whole world is here. It's so bizarre. I mean, I'm just sitting in this little room in rural Canada all by myself with my dog chewing on bones. And it's hard sometimes for me to, I gotta remind myself that yeah, the whole world's right here. It's crazy. What a, what a special group of, of people searching for truth. It's so good to see so many people looking for actual truth, right? It's a good thing. Anyway, all right, I gotta leave the coffee table. Get on with it. I probably got a whole bunch of shit I was supposed to share with you guys and I'm forgetting to. Oh well. There's a good chance I'm going to wake up alive tomorrow and carry on and keep talking, so I'll probably bring it up then. <laughs> uh, what do we got? Share my story, howtohunt.com. That's where you get your truth shared, word for word, all right? And that link, I think, is the link is being posted in the video description below. I can't believe I never did that before. I'm sorry. Oops. The email link to share your truth is in the description below the video, right? What else? I think that's about it. My mind is scrambling. My mind always starts scrambling, and that's when it's it tells me it's time to go and get going. So here I go. <laughs> Coffee, I'll tell you what. Later.